phrase, as easy as child's play, didn't know very much about children. Playtime, in its many expressions, can appear simplistic, but is often extremely complicated. Constructing a land of make-believe, for example, can be very complex, allowing a child to return again and again to a familiar imaginative space with equally imaginative friends. The ability of children to invent is endless. Sydney children have always found magic where adults cannot. There is little doubt that children have an ability to create their own play worlds. Considering the topsy-turvy state of our current world, this is probably a fortunate thing. Sydney children, like kids right through the decades of Australian history, have invented their own games, secret languages and amusements. Old games, songs and crafts come and go and return again to benefit from the evolution of tradition. Play very much depends on social environments. Indigenous children have games honed from centuries of survival. Immigrant children bring with them the play of their ancestors and, of course, all children contribute to the development of a unique Australian culture that is always changing. Aboriginal children in traditional society are brought up with storytelling, string games, songs and dancing passed down to them by their elders. Many of their games designed to sharpen their perception and skill in hunting. One game had the children sit around an ant's nest, with each child nominating their ant. The game was in concentrating and following that particular ant's journey. With the arrival of the first Europeans, the old games of England, Scotland, Wales and Ireland started their own journey into Australia. Skipping games, hopscotch, rope jumping, top spinning, hoop rolling, board games and of course the singing of nursery rhymes and songs. Life was often tough for new settlers. Families had to battle the endless bush, strange environment insects, reptiles and animals, and somehow or other the isolation and loneliness. Children were often left to their own devices and were expected to do their fair share of work before playtime. Accommodation was often a petitioned one-room bark hut. Toys like spinning tops and kites were homemade. Many settlers wallpapered their huts with old magazine or newspaper pages glued onto the bark walls with a glue of sticky flour and water. And these pages became popular for family games like I Spy with My Little Eye. Once upon a time, to use a very familiar children's story opener, life was far simpler. There was less pressure on our leisure time. No television, no video games, and no internet. Necessity, being the mother of invention, shows children at their creative best. Money is no barrier, and old games like hide-and-seek and tag require nothing more than enthusiasm. In lean and mean times like war or economic depression, simple things like brown paper, string and sugar bags provided endless play opportunity. As the Victorian era progressed and our cities grew, more thought was given to leisure time and the amusement of children. The repertoire of traditional indoor and outdoor games expanded. Schools also introduced games into their playgrounds. Physical exercise was paramount and included everything from folk dancing to organised sport. In 1912, the playground movement introduced the first public playgrounds to Sydney in Millers Point. A year later, the Sydney City Council 
opened a government-funded public playground at Victoria Park. This was followed by supervised playgrounds by the Kindergarten Union and City Council at Piermont, Woolloomooloo, Moor Park and Chippendale. 20th century Sydney children had the benefit of the manufacturing boom of the second half of the 19th century, where dolls, bicycles, board games, music boxes and other amusements were mass-produced and therefore generally inexpensive. Some games were considered masculine and others feminine. Those borders have broken down now, but for most of the last century, boys played marbles, chasing and tag games like cowboys and Indians or cops and robbers, whilst girls had dolls, tea sets and skipping ropes. Making things was also gender-oriented. Boys built model cars, kites, and were allowed to use hammers and nails, while girls were expected to learn how to use a sewing machine or keep an autograph book. If there was one thing that defined yesterday's Australian child, it was the billy cart. We made them in all shapes and sizes and hauled them across fields, down rickety lanes and raced down hilly streets. We used them to passenger smaller kids, dolls, dogs and for odd jobs. Collecting refundable soft drink bottles or collecting the groceries from the local store was made easier with a billy cart. They were made from orange crates, old prams or anything that could have four wheels attached. Little thought was given to brakes. There were no rear lights. One of the joys of the billy cart, apart from making it and the sense of accomplishment, was the freedom. Today's teens, no doubt, have the same feeling of freedom when they get the car keys. Billy carts disappeared from our streets in the late 1950s, a victim of the encroaching motor car. After a series of accidents and cries of, The roads are not playgrounds! The billy cart was banned. There wasn't enough room on our streets for motors and billy carts. Kite flying also got a bad rap from the authorities. They'll get stuck on the power lines, the fun police cried. The wooden razzle-dazzle roundabout in the local parks also disappeared as more than one kid came hurtling off. Monkey bars were also considered dangerous and many councils even went as far as prohibiting tree climbing. Roller skating was probably dangerous, however, it was sanctioned as a business. Sydney was on wheels with major rinks, including the Royal Roller Rink at the Moore Park Showgrounds, the Vice Regal Rink at Rushcutters Bay, the Coliseum, North Sydney, and the Bondi Junction Rink at Central Park, just to name a few. One by one, in the 1950s, the roller rinks closed, reflecting the end of another craze. Most Sydney kids had three main events in their diaries. The Royal Easter Show, Christmas and Cracker Night. The Easter Show at the Moor Park Showgrounds was when the country came to town. There were full-throttle screaming rides on the giant octopus and ferris wheel, scary times on the ghost train, and the excitement of the daredevil bike riders on the wheel of death, and the smell of temptation and sugar in the showbag pavilion. Then there was the sheer wonder of Sideshow Alley. Collecting things at the show was competitive, Pamphlets, prizes, samples, show bags and stomach aches being high on the list. Bonfire night, sometimes called Cracker Night or Guy Fawkes Night, the 5th of November, saw giant bonfires explode all over Sydney. In some suburbs, each street had its own, often towering mounds of rubbish of every describable inflammable object, including old furniture car tyres and junk. The guy sat on top, waiting for the match, and up they'd go. Fireworks went upwards, sideways, and some didn't even get off the ground. They were the fizzers. Favourites included Catherine wheels, jumping jacks, bungers, 
Roman candles, black devils, double bungers, Vesuvius and sparklers. Kids saved for months to ensure that they had a good collection of crackers. Then, in 1986, Bonfire Night was banned. The fireworks fizzed out to be replaced by government-sanctioned events featuring super skyrockets and exploding whiz-bangs accompanied by Kylie Minogue spinning around or Tchaikovsky's 1812 Overture. Life for children in today's Sydney is different and often difficult in so many ways. Essentially, we have experienced a monumental shift in so many aspects of day-to-day life. We have become a people who get entertained rather than the old days when we entertained ourselves. We have lost play skills, but at the same time added new ones. We are a product of the information age, and that includes children. In some ways, we have become more passive in our entertainment, and we are suffering the consequences with obesity and social problems. On the bright side, children are born with a fresh slate. They are as creative and inventive as ever. Amidst the hurly-burly of modern life and the temptation of too much screen time, we all need to breathe deeply and allow our child's mind more time for magical escapes.